with the introduction of the Warfare vocation in Dragon's Dogma 2. Our theories regarding the number of playable classes in the sequel gets confirmed by both the color and shape of the Warfare vocation emblem. Looking at the different vocation tiers we have seen so far, we have a basic emblem for vocations we start out with from the beginning of the game. Fighter, Archer, Thief and Mage. The next type of emblem consists of both advanced vocations visualized with a darker color of their basic counterpart, and hybrid vocations represented by the two colors these are built up from. And this was the color scheme introduced in the first game. Blue represented magic, red was melee, and yellow for vocations that could wield a bow. This logic fits well for the magic archer which is a combination of bow and magic, and mystic spearhand which combines melee and magic. But when looking at the trickster emblem, we are presented with two completely new colors we haven't seen before. And it was the introduction of this purple and pink color that initially sparked the many speculations by the community. The only logical explanation would be that we get two new basic or advanced vocations introduced in the sequel, and the Warfarer confirms this with its unique emblem adding a third variety to our vocation lineup. If the trickster just represented a completely unique class and not a hybrid built up of two different vocations, I would expect the trickster to also get the same emblem style as the warfarer. Furthermore, the greyish black color used for the warfarer makes sense here, since it's effectively a combination of all the classes. The trickster is clearly hinting at two new styles of gameplay we already know within the fantasy genre, summoner and alchemist. Capcom have already shown us what a summoner can look like in the character V, and we got an actual alchemist class in Dragon's Dogma Online. Now this might just be a coincidence, but if we look at the colors used for V and the alchemist attacks, it could be a further indication to why they chose the purple and pink colors for the trickster. I would say it's less likely these two classes also get a basic version. It would make sense for these to be unlocked at a later point in our journey, maybe from quests given by a new maester. Let's visualize what we have gathered so far making it easier to deduce what other vocations we are missing from the complete lineup. We start out from the bottom, building our foundation with the four basic vocations. In the next layer, we see the advanced versions for the red and blue archetypes. The philosophy in the first game was that these advanced classes would be further specialized versions of their basic counterpart, usually dealing more damage, but with slower attack speed. They would also sacrifice their defensive traits for more offensive abilities. This would also be reflected in their stat gains that gave advanced classes a bigger boost in physical and magical attack power. And this is why players would play either warrior or sorcerer for a big part of their playthrough, just to get the highest possible strength or magic stats together with the important augments that further improved your damage output. In my opinion, this was a fundamental flaw in the gameplay since it would force players to take very specific paths to build your character. In the sequel, however, it seems they have completely changed how you approach stat gain. We are instead given a new set of stats whenever you change your vocation. This way, you will always be optimized for the class you are using. At the same time, this makes unique classes like the Warfarer balanced with lower stats all across the board. Looking back at the four basic vocations, giving Fighter and Mage a more offensive counterpart with the Warrior and Sorcerer makes sense here, but the Thief and Archer are already full-on offensive vocations with clear specializations. That's why I think they haven't created advanced versions of these classes, but given us hybrids instead. Like the Magic Archer, and the other vocation I would propose is a class that wields a katana. Capcom have already created a based character with a katana in Virgil, and it was the main weapon for the High Scepter in Dragon's Dogma Online, with Itsuno also hinting that he is studying katanas during the development of the sequel. I think it's safe to say that a fast-paced melee rogue hybrid focused around the use of a katana is most likely something we'll see in the sequel. Then we have the trickster with the new purple and pink vocations linked to it. I would say purple should be based around summoning and the dark arts, while the pink vocation would be focused around strengthening your allies and weakening your enemies, much like an alchemist and shield sage from Didion. And it's here I think we'll see the Mystic Knight playstyle return again, with the Great Shield and Scepter as your main weapons. With this lineup, we have included three of the four vocations I believe we most likely will see in the sequel. This is based on the breadcrumbs left by Itsuno in form of Twitter posts and knowledge Dragon's Dogma players have from the previous titles, including Dragon's Dogma Online. But there is one vocation I haven't mentioned yet, the Monk. 
I would say this vocation will take its place beside the Warfarer. While this class is able to use all weapons, the monk specializes in using no weapons other than his fists in combat. Placing the monk vocation here instead of an advanced green vocation gives them more freedom to build this class into a more unique playstyle. Maybe we'll even see holy attacks and skills for the monk like we saw in Diablo. This theory gives us a total of 14 vocations, with 4 basic, 4 advanced and 4 hybrid classes evenly spread. The Warfarer and Monk represent two completely unique playstyles that either can use all the weapons or none at all. For me this would be the most complete and realistic lineup of vocations in the sequel, but in the weeks to come I hope we get even more trailers that reveal new classes and maybe Itsuna actually have cooked up even more vocations that we can't really imagine at this point in time.